Hello, I'll be showing you how to make this particular looking crystal in Houdini and I'll be giving you some tips on lighting and setting up the scene inside Cinema 4D. So let's get started. The first step involves in adding a sphere. You guys can go ahead and uh, use any mesh you like but for the sake of this tutorial I am using a sphere. Uh, make sure this is sphere is set to polygon and I am just increasing the subdivisions a bit. Uh, here I am adding a uh, point hop. So this is to give a surface deformation to our sphere. Now. If you are new to Houdini and don't know much about uh, Vex or Warps or haven't dived much into them, uh, I suggest you to you know start learning a bit about them because I feel like they are they play a, they're really important when you work with uh, Houdini. But I'll try explaining here what I'm uh, basically trying to do. So here I have, I have a multiply and a constant node. So what this is going to do is once we feed this into the um, offset of our noise uh, they are going to be uh, the offset is going to be changing every frame so that uh, you know we don't have to animate the offset by setting keyframes or anything like that so in a way it's procedurally animated uh, so we can drive how fast you want the offset to be uh, just by controlling what value you set in the constant node over there in the bottom left so uh, we'll be animating our, uh, we'll be deforming our sphere over each frame. Uh, so once we plug it into a solver, uh, we can, you know, get a more interesting looking result. Uh, but that's it. The, but but uh, I'll be showing you that in uh, another step. So I'm just playing around with the settings here and make sure your signature uh, is set to 3D noise because we are working with the with 3D model uh, with the 3D geometry here. Uh, so here I am uh, adding the position of our sphere with, uh, to, our, uh, no, uh, to our noise and uh, from there on I will be subtracting the noises with each other so that we just get a more you know kind of uh, radical and uh, interesting looking result. So uh, that's pretty much it uh, in the uh, warp section over here. So as I uh, suggest you, you, you learn a bit about warps uh, and uh, once we hit play, you can see that uh, our sphere is being deformed over each uh, frame. The step 3 involves in adding a solver and uh, this will make a duplicate of our mesh over each frame. So it's simple to do, just add a solver and then add a merge node so that we merge the previous frame and the next frame. Uh, so once I play it, you can see it makes a copy of the mesh over each frames. Moving to the next step now, we are going to be adding a tube. Yeah, this is to make uh, the crystal like structures on top of our mesh to give it even more interesting looking shapes. So uh, be sure to set the columns to 5 or something low. Uh, to give that you know rigidness of a crystal uh, from here I'll be uh, just scaling down the top or a stop uh, polygon so it's easy to make just uh, after after scaling it down I'll be extruding it and then collapsing the edges uh, you guys can also experiment a bit and do something else we'll be also combining them later using a VDB combine so here I'm just uh, collapsing the edges and uh, as you can see in a sec, yep, uh, we'll be getting that sort of result. Moving to the next step now, I'm going to be adding a VDB from Polygon node and uh, from here on I think I will be scattering a few points so that uh, we can copy our crystals onto our mesh. So to do that uh, we have to add a VDB from polygon and then uh, add a scatter. I'm just scattering it on the surface. Uh, you could also scatter inside the volume but here I decided to scatter on top of the surface because I thought that would be more better. 
So I'm also add, adding an attribute randomize and here I'm randomizing the point scale so that once we copy our crystal mesh it's going to be randomly scaled uh, via the attribute uh, name that is p scale. So uh, you can play around with these settings again doesn't uh, have to be exact as mine and also I'll be adding an attribute triangle and I'll be giving the expression at n equal to at p. This means that our crystals are going to be aligned uh, facing outwards from the mesh. Uh, this will make more sense once we copy it and uh, as you can see from the normals here the, po the points are uh, pointing outwards. So uh, once we copy the mesh the crystals are going to be facing outwards and uh, as you can see they are really not facing outwards right now but that's because we have to rotate it and align it to the correct uh, rotation. So I'm going to be uh, manipulating the rotation of, of the x axis and uh, I'll just set that to 90. So as you can see here we have a random scaling going on and all the crystals are facing outwards. Moving to the next step I'm going to be um, converting them uh, to VDB pol sorry VDB surface. So we do this by adding a VDB from polygons and uh, uh, after this I'll be combining them both using the VDB combine node and uh, just make sure you plug in these two meshes into the VDB combine and uh, inside the VDB combine node you have to make sure the operation is set to SDF union that's going to unify both of our uh, SDF uh, surfaces. So as you can see it's both unified now and uh, we can con convert them back to polygons using a convert VDB. Make sure the convert to operation is set to polygons. And we can move to the next step which is adding even more surface variation using deformation. So I'll be adding a point warp again. Uh, this time I'll be giving a more subtle uh, surface deformation using turbulent noise again uh, so this is all experimental you can go ahead and play around with the noise types and uh, whatever so uh, I'm just adding a turbulent noise layering them on top of each other uh, simple stuff you I'll be uh, I think I'll be uh, adding three of these noises together to give a more subtle but uh, nice looking variation to our mesh. So these settings are again what I found to be uh, good. You can go ahead and uh, play around with these settings, see what different nodes you can connect with and uh, get a crazy result or something. So as you can see we got a nice looking result, there is some subtle uh, deformation happening not too much but just enough to give a, a bit of a surface you know variation so going to the next step um, I'm going to be adding some internal fracturing and uh, the, you can stop go ahead and stop here if you like but uh, I wanted it to be more complete so I'm going to be adding a bit of internal fracturing that you can see happening in crystals. So we can do this by adding a VDB from polygons and make sure you set it to fog VDB this time so that uh, once we scatter the points it also scatters inside the volume. Now uh, I'm going to be applying a scatter. I'm going to give a number of 60 and uh, we'll be scattering grids on top but uh, now I'm adding an attribute randomness and this is so that uh, our grids are oriented in a random uh, order so I'm giving this attribute name orient and make sure the dimens dimensions are set to 4 because it's a quaternion and uh, now I'm adding a grid uh, to make the boolean operation later on. I just added a simple mountain mountain swap 
and uh, i'm just giving it some really really basic uh, noise deformation just to give it some variation uh, i'm not going to be adding a point warp and uh, you know doing all that fancy noise stuff but uh, i'll be adding just a mountain sub just for the simplicity of it now as you can see i've copied it onto the points that we scattered and they are oriented in a random way uh, so once we plug it into the boolean make sure we have uh, set the set b to surface or what whichever surface that you connect your grids to make sure that is set to surface As you can see, once our boolean operation is complete, we, we get this quite intricate um, structure going on. Uh, we get a nice refraction and a reflection you know, effect once we render it. So I'm, I'll be adding a poly soup node after this because I had some trouble importing this mesh into Cinema 4D. It couldn't recognize for some reason. So after I added poly soup, it for some reason, you know, Cinema 4D for some reason decided to import after I added polysoup I don't know maybe it's a bug so we can go ahead and add a merge node so that our internal fracturing and our mesh is contained in a file so we can save it by right clicking and uh, clicking on save just make sure you add the extension .obj at the end of the file name that way it saves out as an obj file so in the final part of this tutorial, I'll uh, be rendering the material inside Cinema 4D. Uh, it's a fairly simple uh, material to set up. So I'll see you in the next part. So I've already imported my geometry to Cinema 4D. And first thing is I'm going to be disabling the form tag. I had some shading issues with the font tag enabled so if you guys have some uh, shading issues make sure you go ahead and disable the font tag so next up i'm going to be scaling up the crystal to fit with our cinema 4d default uh, scene scaling so also i'll be working with uh, redshift uh, but you guys can use any render you like uh, this is very easy to replicate in other renderers moving to lights i'll be adding just two of them and I'll scale them vertically uh, one thing to note is that uh, working with these type of models and materials that have a lot of uh, you know intersections going on and uh, in our case internal fracturing and also since our material is going to be very reflective and uh, has transmission properties it's important that uh, you guys spend a bit more time with uh, lighting and uh, the placement of lights as you can see i have added a dome light as well and uh, i gave it uh, hdr so this is going to give us good reflection once we add our material on top so make sure you play around with the lights a bit uh, so next up i'll be adding a material and um, the material is very simple uh, i'm not adding any noise or uh, texturing on top but if you want surface variation if you want uh, to add bump or normals or some roughness variation you could definitely go ahead and uh, do that i did some google research and i found out that uh, uh, quartz crystal has a ir value of 1.66 so i'm going ahead and uh, giving the ir value 1.66 in the reflection also make sure that in your renderer um, make sure the same value is being uh, given to the transmission properties uh, of the IR uh, also I'll be adding some subsurface scattering to give that smoky kind of effect uh, if you want a clear crystal you could skip this uh, so I'll also be adding a layer of coating on top uh, this is going to give us extra reflections so also make sure that uh, your dispersion is enabled and uh, this is going to split up our uh, white light that hits our material into different colors so that's pretty much it actually so from here on i'm just uh, rotating the crystal seeing what i like so that's pretty much it that's the end of the tutorial uh, make sure you play around with the lights also the materials 
see what you can come up with and uh, with some post processing you could make this uh, stand out even more so i hope you found this tutorial uh, helpful and i uh, hope you learned something new uh, if you have any questions or doubts uh, or some clarifications uh, you could comment them down below i'll uh, try answering them also you could uh, message me on instagram at the rosnick so i'll see you in the next tutorial take care